It's been over a year since I installed my initial solar panels here at the Epic Homestead, and I actually just completed installing 11 more panels. So let's take a look back at the last year, as well as why I decided to add even more panels to the system this year. The first thing I wanna look at is how much energy did I generate in a single year? Now I installed my panels last year in 2021 on January 8th. So what I just did is I looked back from January 8th, 2021 to 2022, January 8th, how much did I generate? And on the graph here, it looks like I generated almost exactly 8,000 kilowatt hours. What you can see when you look at the graph are these dramatic drops in production. And that's just because we had a period of cloudy weather where of course the solar energy that's coming out of the sun is being blocked by the clouds. And so you just have lower energy. But 8,000 kilowatt hours or eight megawatts from one full 365 day period of running the panels. The most energy I produced in one single day was 35.3 kilowatt hours. Must have been a very sunny day, probably sometime in the summer where the angle of the sun was great and there were no clouds in the sky and maybe I even washed the panels off to make sure all the dust and grime was off of them. But what we wanna look at next is what is the cost of the energy that I would have been spending? So I looked at my San Diego gas and electric bills and it looks like the electricity rates changed a little bit at the end of last year. So my rates are about 21.6 cents per kilowatt hour, no matter whether I'm using it on, off, or super off peak. So I don't have any sort of curvature to my rates, at least right now from what I could tell from a recent bill. So at about 21.6 cents, if we look at my energy month to month, I'm gonna put a little chart up here for you, what you can see is the beginning of January in 2021, I had a very large energy bill because I was paying for effectively December's energy and I was aggressively running all the systems in my home just with no regard for energy production, just to see what my true kilowatt hour usage was if I wasn't conserving energy in any way. So I had a $448.84 bill on the January 3rd billing date but what you then see is the number just drops down to about $10 a month. And that is the non-bypassable charge that I'm subjected to for being connected to the grid. So if I have no true energy cost, the net production is higher than the net consumption, AKA I'm generating more than I'm consuming, then I still have to pay $10 a month to get connected to the grid. Non-bypassable, it is what it is. So the lowest I could ever pay to have electricity in general is $120 a year, if you think about it that way. Now, as you go on, you start to see that I draw down. So I have a negative balance because I'm generating more than I'm producing this month, April the 5th. And then it looks like August and September, as well as December, I drew downwards. And so I'm basically just accruing credits that I can apply to energy months where I am using more than I'm producing. So when we look at electricity cost for the calendar year of 2021, I paid around a hundred-ish dollars in true energy cost, and most of that is overage from that December of 2020 when I kind of ran the bill up a little bit. So the true, true cost is actually lower than that, bar trending towards just actually zero or negative. And when we look at usage, energy usage, what you can see is that I'm not using, aside from that first crazy month, anywhere over the amount that I produce. So every single month is negative except for January and February. February, I use seven kilowatt hours more than I produced, but every other month I'm either accruing, you know, 300 up to maybe touching close to 600 kilowatt hours in the negative, which means I'm banking energy or I'm producing energy really for the grid that you only get a credit for, at least in California, up to the point you use. I'm not getting paid for generating that extra energy unless I'm actually using it, which is a little bit confusing. It's just the net energy metering process here in California is, is how that works. You don't get credit for the energy that you actually make unless you use it and then it offsets your own, own bill. But it would be nice if we could get paid to actually produce for the grid. I think it would incentivize a lot more people to put residential solar on their homes if you knew that because you're becoming a power generator for the grid, you're actually getting rewarded in a more substantial way. Hopefully the laws change sometime. I think that'd be really interesting. Now, let's get to why I added even more solar panels if I'm already in the negative. Wouldn't I just be incurring a cost and then my payback period for solar goes up even higher? So if you remember from my previous solar update, my six month update, I actually encourage you to watch that video if you have general solar questions because the latter half of that video, I answer a ton of them for you. But I did do a payback period calculator 
back then when I only had my initial panels and my initial costs and I was gonna pay myself back in about 4.89 years, which is actually pretty short. Most solar paybacks, six to 10 years, because of the amount of energy I was using and the rate of that energy, my payback period was decreased a little bit, which is really, really good. I mean, five years, that's a no brainer for me as far as an investment goes. But when we look at adding more panels, my costs of course went up and my production has gone up, but my consumption hasn't quite gone up yet. So let's go ahead and just do a really rough calculator here. So back then, I believe I had a cost of 12,500. The extra panels were an additional 7,500. So now I'm at 20,000. My cost of electricity has actually gone down just slightly. It's been sort of smoothed out a little bit at 21.6 cents. And then my estimated energy usage per year, I think back then I used somewhere around 700 kilowatts or 750 kilowatts per month. Now I've got this pond behind me. I've got some other things that I've built out here. We have outdoor lighting that's here now. So I'm actually gonna bump that up to, uh, let's just be aggressive and say 900. And then we're going to include the 26% federal tax credit because that's still available for 2022. So if I calculate my new payback period, it looks like it pays for itself in 6.34 years. So I added more production, actually extended my runway to start actually being ROI positive on the investment, but I do plan to be here for 6.34 years. And we never know if I'm going to use even more energy than this 900. What's nice now is because, think about the incentive structure of, of at least California solar. You aren't rewarded for generating more than you consume. The only way you're rewarded is that you actually get to accrue a negative balance that you can apply to like a future high energy month. So if you think about what the incentives do there, it sort of incentivizes you to use exactly as much as you consume because you're not getting a benefit for it otherwise. And so what that means here is I can optimize the home and I can optimize the garden, not necessarily to be extremely low in energy because I've basically become my own energy generator. What I can do is I can set up the mini split ACs in my home to turn on and off automatically without fear of it being at a high energy part of the day. I can let this pond keep running this way. It needs to keep running. The pump is absolutely crucial to the functionality of the pond, so I can't not turn it on. But before I was thinking, okay, maybe I could turn it off and on every other hour so that the pump doesn't draw so much energy. Now I know I can just let it keep on running. All the lights in the back here are irrigation systems, are cooking systems, I can move my stove perhaps over to induction. I don't really have to worry about energy at all. So was this an expensive project? For sure. I mean, putting on 25 solar panels on a home at the cost of around eighteen dollars to $20,000 before the credit is, is definitely really expensive. However, with a payback period of 6.34 and a lifetime of 20 to 25 years, there's going to be a significant portion of my life that I am just generating energy for free and I'm ahead of any sort of law that might come in place here in California that actually makes it really disadvantageous to own solar. Something that was on the docket was basically going to disincentivize solar and kind of screw over people who have put residential solar on their home because basically they felt that it was too advantageous, which is absolutely nonsense if you ask me. It's the power companies trying to do a little bit of a cash grab but I'm grandfathered in now, so I don't have to worry about that coming into play. So all in all, I think it's been a fantastic experience. Like I said, I used West Coast Solar, which you can see in the description here. I think actually a couple of viewers have used them here in San Diego, so they've, they've been fantastic. And it's been really, really fun to go through this process and just know that I'm setting up the water systems, the energy systems, and hopefully the food both vegetable and protein with the egg systems here at the homestead, that it is starting to become a production house. We are producing on this property. We are not just consuming. Do you have any other questions about solar? Drop them down in the comments. Till next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.